Hello and welcome back to the Not The Old Firm YouTube channel. My name is Ben Banks. Back on the morning after Scottish Cup semi-final weekend as the last four competitions of last season took place this season. And now there will be a repeat of the season before last's Scottish Cup final after the weekend. Let's try and say that one quickly. But over the weekend, Hearts played Hibs. <laughs> Aberdeen played Celtic. Two interesting times, plenty of drama, and we'll look at it all just now. First of all, on the Saturday was Hearts v Hibs, a 2-1 extra time win for Hearts. Hibs again suffering Derby Blues at Hamden. There just seems to be something, even though Hearts have been perhaps not favoured in the last few derbies, they've still managed to come out on top. And it was another good day for them as they set up a final with Celtic, who won 2-0 against Aberdeen on the Sunday. A comfortable victory for them. Damage was done in the first half. Ryan Christie and Mohamed El Yunusi. Goals for them. Sets up a repeat of the final from the 2018-19 season for the 2019-20 final, which will be played five days before Christmas this year. So that will be a lot of fun, I'm sure, for fans. Depending on um, the way the game goes. Um, looking at the Saturday game, first half we have, we'll look at the game in a wee bit of detail, but the day was obviously overshadowed by sad news of Mary Saliukis passing away at the age of 36 after a short battle with motor neuron disease. It was quite sad and poignant, really. I mean, the day passed was the day Hearts were playing Hibs in a Scottish Cup semi final, obviously. Saliukis was the 2012 captain when Hearts last won the Scottish Cup beating the Hibs 5-1. They also had stints at Leeds United and Rangers. Um, it was, it's just quite sad, really. I mean, it was obviously a great day on the pitch for Hearts, but the day was sort of cast a dark shadow over it, obviously, one of their... Uh, that that all definitely overshadowed the win a bit for them. Um, it was a big popular figure at Time Castle, so yeah, it would have been a kind of really sad one for them. I mean, the, on the pitch itself, it was, it was a bit of an odd game, kind of Hibs on paper, should have been runaway favourites, really. They're the informed Premiership team who's been back playing actively for, what, what, three months into the season now? Hearts have got, I think they've played five or six times the League Cup in the first couple of Championship games. They've not been particularly great in their games so far this season. So kind of getting into it, it was, yeah, you'd have thought Hibs were going to run away with it, and then, well, they Hibs it. Right. If they were ever going to get run over Hearts in a big massive derby, you felt like this was the moment for them. Oh, well, it had to be. It absolutely had to be. Just everything on paper, it was it was perfectly set up for Hibs to set it up and set themselves up for a final. But yeah, they balled it. Fair play to Hearts. I mean, they still had to. They still had to play well. I know Jack Ross said that. Hibs perhaps didn't perform too badly either, but again, there just seemed to be something missing. It doesn't really get any easier for him after his Sunderland stints. He obviously didn't have a great time of things in the, the finals down there, the league playoff final, and then the Johnston's paint trophy, I believe it was called then. Um, so he's not had a great time, and it was another sore one for him. But Hibs, I mean, it, I don't think it's a season-defining one. I think the victory perhaps means a bit more to Hearts if that makes sense, obviously it would have been a massive victory for Hibs, but I think Hibs have got bigger things to worry about this season than last season's Scottish Cup. They're doing well in the league. They're three or four points ahead. I think that has to be their sole aim, is to sort of be the best of the rest outside the Celtic and Rangers, but obviously it doesn't it doesn't help on the day. It'll be a sore one for them. Um, but I don't think it's... When you look at how their season's gone, I don't think it's a particularly season-defining one for them. The... Probably the one little kind of perverse silver lining that Hibs fans can take from it would be that had things been as normal and the Scottish Cup final had been played in May like it was supposed to be, Hearts would have now, in theory, had a European place. And the money that comes with that, by playing Celtic in the final, Celtic are, Celtic would have been last season champions and they were the Champions League place, Hearts would have got the Europa League spot which would have cushioned the blow for relegation for them. No, I don't. I think um, they would have had to have won the Cup. I'm pretty sure that the European spot gets passed down to the fourth place as of last season's rules. Um, yeah, I thought it was only changed for last season for the, the COVID nonsense. Uh, no, that that, like that, nah, that's been the case for a, a few years now. I'm not sure. But um, 
by it's um, a tough one for them, but obviously they were overshadowed by the Marius Aluku stuff. He was sort of one of the first ones. Obviously, I, I started watching going to games in about 2007, but I don't really have any particular strong memories of players, maybe until like 2009, 2010, because I mean, I was five, you know what I mean? I'm not exactly remembering every game I went to in the 2006-07 season, but Marius Aluku is probably the first proper Hearts captain I remember. You know, why, are you, why are you shaking your head like that? Wouldn't be my age again, would it? But um, he's sort of the first proper Hearts captain I remember, and I can there was a nice clip of him going around. He just seemed to, to get what that club was all about, a happy-go-lucky type figure I've seen some people describe him as. No, I think especially when you kind of look back at that spell at Hearts and uh, the job a lot of Lithuanian players that they had under Romanov, I think he was kind of one of the few that properly kind of seemed I don't want to use the, the he, he got it cliche, but uh, I, he was one of the ones that, that, that seemed to be, first of all, kind of halfway competent footballer, but it's certainly someone that they could actually have as a long term like, asset there. A lot of the guys you've brought in, you'd get three, four, five games from them, and then they'd bugger off back to Zalgris Vilnius or wherever they'd come from. But I, uh, Zalgris was somebody that they seemed to really take to Scottish football. I, mean, I think he played like over 200 games for Hearts so they definitely can enjoy his football there but it's definitely a, a kind of sad way to end what would have been a, a really happy afternoon for them yeah, I thought are with his family just now um, on the Sunday Aberdeen Celtic Aberdeen similar to sort of Hibs really if there was ever a time they were going to be a team that's had the bet their upper hand in recent years it was going to have to be this one Celtic while still looked better against Lille hadn't won in four games before you go off on your tangent let me finish mine and um, again it was the game was over in 23 minutes Ryan Christie's goal goal of the season contender an absolutely brilliant strike and then Tom Rogic again causing them serious problems and then 2-0 and there's no really, when you're 2-0 down against a Celtic side who have won like 34, 35 domestic cup games in a row, game's done in 23 minutes and that for me is the most demoralising thing, playing the rest of it when there's not really much hope of anything happening. That game was over when the final whistle blew at Butaudry a couple of games back. Why is that? Because an Aberdeen, I mean, go back through Derek McInnes's reign as Aberdeen manager. Right, and you can go back to the very, very start for when he took over as Aberdeen boss. For every halfway passable performance there, are against, there is against Celtic, it's then followed by six absolutely abject ones. He had his wee up, his wee up lift against them at Petodre where they got a draw. And I just knew it. Derek McInnes' side was never going to have it in them to go and do it two games in a row against them in such short order. He's just, I've made my feelings clear on McInnes as a manager before. I think he's uh, pretty much a bottle merchant. Um, and it has been for a long, long time. And I think you've seen that again at Hamden. No, I think, I think actually, to be fair, I mean, they had that 23 minute spell in Aberdeen, didn't it? wasn't really so utterly hopeless and void of any ideas. They defended fairly well for the most of the game. It was just a crazy five-minute spell. But again, they had a unfit Sam Cosgrove up front, who did his best, given the fact that was his first start of the season. But again, it was just like, they're just you, you got that sense well, of ability about it. Let me let me flip it around for you. Right? See, so see the Petaudry game? Mm-hmm. Pretty much all the way through that, you could sit all the way through that game and go, Aberdeen might take something here. Pretty much for the first kick of the ball, it was, you know, Aberdeen actually, they look up for this. They look like they might take something. Yesterday, ah, yesterday, uh, even allowing for that kind of 23-minute spell, did you ever sit and have any expectation that anybody other than Celtic would be in the Scottish Cup final? I think it's that, you know, obviously, given Celtic's record in recent years, they have to be favourites. But as I've said, that five minute spell kills the game. It makes it as a neutral as well. You're watching it and you're already sitting watching from 23 minutes on going, oh, here, Celtic are in another cup final. I think for fans of other teams that aren't Celtic, obviously Celtic are rebel in it. Um, but 
other teams, they just every team wants to be the team that eventually puts them out of the cup. And to them watch another 23 minutes of football where you know it's going to be Celtic again, beating it for an Aberdeen fan, that just must be. I think that's seven or eight. Uh, when I was doing my report yesterday, that's seven or eight as well. Semi-finals or finals Aberdeen have lost on just under Derek McInnes in recent times. And whilst you could look at it one way and say, well, that's great. They've managed to get to all those semi-finals and finals. You also need to look at it another way and it's like, that's so many times that it's another story of what could have been. For how long have Aberdeen... Since the whole Rangers thing in 2012, we've heard for a long time that Aberdeen's the new second force in this country. Eight choked semi-finals. Yeah, across... I think um, across eight, six or seven or eight semi-finals and finals, I... They've suffered defeat in them, and I, I think that's now 1990, I believe, it was the last time Aberdeen won the Scottish Cup, and for a, a team that's probably been probably third or fourth strongest force in uh, Scottish football since that time, even though I know Aberdeen were, uh, had their heyday in the 80s and early 90s, but they are still being seen since then, more or less, as the third or fourth biggest team in Scotland, and to have no Scottish Cups in that time and very few League Cups as well. I'm pretty sure though, I think obviously they won the one under Derek McInnes. There's been little silver. What is it? I think they've won two. Do you remember the one at like 1995 or something? Mm. Back when it was a Coca-Cola Cup. Um, but no, it is. It's simply, it's, it's nowhere near good enough for a club with the, the kind of expectations that Aberdeen have, a club with the illusions of being the size that Aberdeen think they are, getting to semi-finals and then losing there so often isn't good enough. I mean, even even to allow for getting to finals and then losing the final to Celtic or to Rangers or whoever else, you could almost allow it to go a little bit more. But getting to the semi, hmm. if you were Falkirk and you got to that many semis and lost out, yeah, fair enough. Inverness, Cali, you get to that many semis. Yeah, fair enough. Aberdeen, it's, it's a bit, a bit mediocre. Obviously, I mean, you could, obviously, you could put a positive spin on it. You could look at it one way and say they have still managed to get to. They have been the most consistent team, really. Probably outside the Hearts. Hearts have done well as well in recent seasons with the cup, with the domestic cups. Aberdeen have consistently been in and around that last eight, at least the last eight top four picture in recent times and then obviously the odd final here and there but I think fans are starting to wonder sort of when is when's it just going to be more than a day out when are they actually going to have memories to celebrate when you're at the level that Aberdeen want to think they're at then simply getting there for the day out isn't enough mm-hmm. right. well it's obviously the cup final is on December 20th I believe um, Celtic be Hearts again it'll be Celtic will be overwhelming favourites in that one then we'll have some harsh coverage. It's obviously still a wee while away as we record this, only the second of November. But we'll have coverage of hearts and stuff on the build up to that and the run up to Christmas. So hopefully, um, for all concerned, but not the old firm, it's a NTOA victory, um, or it could be Celtic completing the quadruple treble. It remains to be seen. But plenty of league action across Scotland before then. So we hope you have enjoyed this short review of the Scottish Cup action. Do check out our other content on the channel. We'll have a Premiership review of the weekend's action that went on alongside the Scottish Cup. We had interviews from the likes of Alex Dyer, Gary Holt, and Stephen Robinson, as Storm Aiden just about battered everybody in the SPFL over the weekend. Um, so that's going to be on the channel soon. We'll have an interview with Hibs defender Tom James, currently on loan at Wigan. He's due back at Hibs in January. And he tells us whether he's going to be staying at Wigan for the first year of all, or whether he'll be back at Easter Road in the winter. So do check that one out. And as well as that, remember to subscribe to our channel, like the video so you don't miss a video on our channel as well, hit the notification bell. I think that's all the PR stuff I've got out the road, so until next time, take it easy.